So you have these uh, definition of positive definiteness and I want to connect it to uh, this matrix. Yeah, I want to sort of claim in some sense that the matrix function x transpose a x yeah, or, or basically if I just add a t plus 1 does not change much. This is also a positive definite function in the sense of you know how we talk about positive definiteness. Okay. So, I want both definitions to align. So, I want to claim that x transpose a x given that a is positive definite is a gives is a positive definite function. Okay. How do I do that? It is pretty straightforward. I can decompose a in this form because a is a symmetric matrix uh, otherwise I cannot talk about positive definiteness. So, a is symmetric therefore, it is you can decompose it in this form this m transpose lambda m where lambda contains a diagonal matrix of eigenvalues and m is just the eigenvectors all right so i can do this sort of uh, characterization here right and then if i write my uh, if i write x transpose ax in this form right basically i'm just uh, in a sense doing a similarity transformation if you think in terms of coordinates yeah so if i write my x transpose ax like this and i choose uh, and so i can write this as mx transpose lambda mx and I choose y as mx, just a new state, right? This is the similarity transformation, right? Uh, so, so y is constructed out of the eigenvectors, right? All right. Then this quadratic form can be written as this y transpose lambda y. All of this is very simple for symmetric matrices, right? Real eigenvalues, diagonalizable naturally, and all that. Yeah. If it's not, then you have more problem. But we are dealing with this nice symmetric matrices right. So, this is essentially sum of lambda i y i squared and all the lambda i's are obviously strictly positive and so this has to be greater than equal to some lambda min norm y squared right because I take just the smallest lambda i it is a finite number of lambda i so I can take the min. So, I can just write this as lambda min sum of y i squared. So, lambda min sum of y i squared is just lambda min times norm of y squared right and so basically what I have is a class k function right it is lambda min times class k function of norm y right? because the norm itself is a class k function right it is like saying x square is a class k function right similarly norm of y square is a class k function in fact it is a class k r function okay it is a class k r function not just a class k function okay so therefore this and this is just a scaling right it is a positive scaling it does not affect the class k nature of the function right. So, this is just a positive scaling multiplied by phi norm y square. In fact, I can take this with the norm y square and just say that it is yeah it is a class k function. So, what have we shown? We have just shown that x transpose a x is dominates a class k function. In fact, it dominates a class k r function. Therefore, x transpose a x itself is a positive definite function ok. That is all we need. We need it has to be 0 at 0 and all that ok. I mean it is 0 at 0 right. X transpose A x is obviously 0 at 0 right and uh, it has to be continuous which is also obviously the case. X transpose A x is continuous in x no problem smooth in x in fact yeah. So, this is a X transpose A x has been proven to be a class uh, sorry a positive definite function ok and that is what we needed needed we wanted to reconcile yeah. So, even if I take my Vtx with a time argument here multiplied by x transpose Ax in this form no problem it is still greater than equal to x transpose Ax for all non-negative t. So, therefore, this is also a positive definite function ok. Does that make sense alright ok great alright. So, now that we have this sort of characterization for class k function I will again say that it is not easy to verify this in general yeah because I did all this I sort of cheated right because I first constructed a phi and then constructed a v. In reality for most systems you have to construct a v first and you do not think about constructing a class k function to dominate and all that all right. 
but once you have a v trying to find a class k function that it dominates it is not very easy all right and so here we have this nice and easier conditions which uh, obviously have been uh, sort of collected here from vidya sagar's book okay and the characterization is very straightforward if you have a function of only the state okay that i therefore i use a different notation it is still the same v or whatever you want to call it i use wx because there is no time argument so i'm using just a different notation to distinguish these cases so if you want to discuss positive definiteness of wx uh, which is a function of the state only uh, then you require to check you are required to check only two things one that it is zero at zero this was any way one of the conditions same condition doesn't change anything right and the second one is this guy yeah the wx has to be strictly positive for all x which is not zero in this domain yeah so this domain that is ball of radius r is fixed we are somehow assuming that our states evolve in this ball okay so you have to only verify two things one that it's zero at zero value of the state and two that it is strictly positive whenever the states are non zero okay again something that should remind you of the norm right norm also has such a property right it is zero when the argument is zero and it is strictly positive when argument is non zero okay you can see that there are these you no know, similarities between the two okay great uh now uh, the easy check does not remain so easy when you have a function of both time and state uh in this case uh, the only way to check is obviously you want the first condition which you cannot do away with in any case all right uh the only way to verify this is that you have to find a uh positive definite w to dominate which is only a function of the state now okay so instead of hunting for a class k function you are hunting for a positive definite wx okay so i wouldn't say this is significantly easier or anything like that huh? but still it is another characterization okay so so what this first characterization any anyway, more often than not we are dealing with time invariant or autonomous systems we hardly talk about uh, or we hardly see a lot of real examples where there is time varying quantities in the system usually we don't yeah and even if we do uh more often than not the lyapunov or the lyapunov function means that we look at uh, do not contain a time argument okay we use a, a time invariant v to even analyze uh, even systems that are time varying at times okay so uh, so this second one being not so useful does not impact us in a lot of scenarios uh, but it can also yeah so uh so these are the easy characterizations you can see all you have to check is that it is zero for especially for the case where there is only the state you just have to check that it's zero at zero and then it is positive for all non zero values of the state very easy yeah and the proof of this is in obviously in vidya sagar's book yeah please take a look at it it's very interesting what it basically says is that if you have this kind of a condition then you can always find a class k function to dominate okay if this condition is satisfied you can always find a class k function to dominate okay so this is uh, rather nice right rather powerful it is not a, it's not exactly constructive in the sense that the book is not actually showing you a construction of the class k function but it just shows that there exists such a class k function okay so this, this is pretty cool okay all right uh the only thing is for v to be negative definite minus v needs to be positive definite yeah this guy all right and the notation we use is just the flipped version all right okay great acha i, I don't know why i have repeated this because it's we've already looked at this i believe okay we already looked at this example yeah uh, if you take vt x as t plus 1 x transpose ax okay uh, then it is then in this case i know that it is greater than equal to wx defined in this form for all non negative t right and once i have wx equal to this i just need to uh, verify uh, 
this uh, positive definiteness of wx right uh, it's not difficult at all it is 0 at 0 no problem yeah and since in fact i don't have to even look at a lot of arguments because it's a positive definite matrix in between the quadratic form is always positive right by virtue of it being a positive definite matrix x transpose ax is always positive for non zero x yeah that is what it means for matrix to be positive definite so even without looking at this eigen value decomposition i can directly say this right because a is positive definite for all non zero values of x x transpose ax has to be strictly positive and that's all we need here strictly positive for all non zero states okay which exactly is satisfied in this case okay so pretty straightforward so the idea is positive definite matrices lead to positive definite functions okay so uh, and and please don't think of this as a trivial result uh, the point is we use in a lot of scenarios we do use quadratic Lyapunov functions even for nonlinear systems okay especially when you have systems which are to a large extent uh, feedback linearizable okay we've not talked about this obviously we'll come to this in the second half of the course but a uh, lot of systems can be linearized via feedback yeah a lot of aero mechanical systems okay can be linearized via feedback okay and for most of those systems we can use quadratic Lyapunov functions yeah because once you have some kind something linear appearing in your dynamics then you can use the linear uh, Lyapunov candidate right which is x transpose ax or px or whatever you want to call it. okay all right excellent what about this guy uh, this is this function okay earlier we tried to verify that everything is a class k function and all that but i know now that this is greater than or equal to this guy and i know that this is 0 at 0 and i know that for all non zero values of the state which is norm x is non zero if norm x is non zero this is positive right so therefore v vtx is dominating a positive definite function all right so i didn't have to find any class k function to dominate again yeah of course in this case this is also a class k function but um, even if it's not the case we don't have to worry about it all right okay the next uh, more uh, stringent or more uh, or a smaller class of functions is the radially unbounded functions okay in this case uh, we can no longer take as argument states in a ball but it has to take arguments which are all of from all of rn okay so no more br ball of radius r and all that yeah because we are talking about radial unboundedness which is a global property in some sense okay uh, and again the everything else is the same time and states maps to some real number right you require that the function is 0 at 0 the only difference now is that it has to dominate a class k r function okay the function has the function v t x has to dominate a class k r function okay for all t in r plus and for all x in r n okay now slightly different picture v is allowed to be oscillating no problem oscillating v is fine and again i should say yeah fine. yeah and oscillating v is fine but it has to be above this class k r function therefore as you can imagine as x goes to infinity v t x also goes to infinity right because it's always above this guy so if this guy is going to infinity this also has to go to infinity okay all right so that's the difference so the property of going to infinity is inherited by the radially unbounded function also therefore the word radially unbounded okay why radially because you can think of somehow norm of x as some kind of you know radial direction okay so it basically as norm of x goes unbounded which is the same as saying state goes unbounded v also has to go unbounded okay 
and as I mentioned this is connected to global stability ok yeah we will talk about why in some sense I mean maybe later but but um, the idea is not that complicated if your function sort of um, I mean if you have a, a function say if your function looks like this yeah I mean I am at 0 yeah going to infinity on both sides if this is v and this is x forget the time argument okay if the function look looks like this then great I mean if you say that uh, if you somehow say that uh, in the y argument that is in if you somehow can claim that my function lies below this guy yeah if I if I can claim that my function all value always remains below this right then I can claim that my x lies within this yes no problem hmm? this is a radially unbounded function okay this is a radially unbounded function yeah it goes all the way to infinity but now if I have a different scenario, I have to make a different picture, sorry, I can't fit it here. If I have a different scenario, which is that you have a function which now does this, yeah, very much a class, I mean positive definite function by the way. Right, because I am only concerned about uh, you know say some domain whatever yeah you can think of this as increasing even there yeah. I mean you can sort of imagine that this is also increasing huh? I mean not actually flat but the point is now if I say that my y just look at this now if I say that my y is restricted to this level ok again this level is not uh, whatever I mean this this level is close to the upper bound in some sense hmm? I can't say much about x right x can be really large the bound on x could be really really very large of course if I give you smaller bound then ok but if I am actually giving you bound right on the boundary then I can't say anything much about x, x could be very large ok. Therefore you can see this is not the one on the left, this is not a radially unbounded function ok. Even let us assume that in both cases the domain is Rn, let us not worry about Br and all that, there is no Br, let us assume that the domain in both cases is Rn but this function is this structure and this function is this structure. This function at this guy lets you actually conclude something about yeah for all possible values of v you can claim some bound on x here you can't hmm? so this invertibility sort of property is what uh, makes radially unbounded functions amenable to global results yeah and here it will only give you local results why local only until some x you can some levels you can work with from this level ok this level ok this level ok here not ok beyond that forget it you can't say anything beyond this level though nothing obviously hmm? can't say anything about x x could be anything hmm? because we can never reach that level all right so that keep that in mind that's the idea we can we'll of course prove some things so that these ideas are not just ideas and you see that it works in the math also but it all depends it's it's always using invertibility properties you will always think of using v inverse whenever you look at the proof you will see entire proof goes by using v inverse and so on and so forth and that's what is this is this is v inverse right okay all right great okay so examples this function obviously class kr just the norm in fact just the euclidean norm yeah this it's itself is a class kr function so if i take v as that v has to be radially unbounded huh? 
because it's equal to a class kr function all right simple this example again obviously class kr why because this dominates this guy right this dominates this for all non negative time right so again class kr uh, sorry dominates a uh, class kr function or a you know positive definite or a radially unbounded function right so you are fine so this is radially unbounded yeah in fact uh, you can also think of it differently you can say that this is dominating a class k function and goes to infinity as x goes to infinity in any direction so we are fine okay all right i think that was until let's see. like this hmm? yeah let's look at this guy what about this guy 1 plus sin square t divided by 2 x1 square plus x2 square okay i am again claiming that this is greater than equal to half x1 square plus x2 square for all non negative t convinced yes because sinusoid smallest value is 0 because i took a square deliberately so therefore i get the half okay i have deliberately taken this example for one specific reason hmm? okay um easier conditions okay uh, unfortunately for all the examples i am taking uh, easier conditions and the normal conditions don't look too different but i can promise you these easier conditions are what most people use yeah they never try to find a lower bounding class k function and kr function all right all right. what are the easier conditions the first two conditions look exactly the same for radial unboundedness the only thing additional is this going to infinity condition right because obviously this verifies that w is a class k function and radial unboundedness is just a class k function with going it going to infinity that's it all right though again remember it's not that simple it, it, this is being verified for all rn other than zero hmm? not just x in a ball okay not just x in a ball so the first two conditions in vidya sagar's book especially uh, they tend to have additional notation they use local positive definite lpdf and pdf so locally positive definite functions and positive definite functions so this is actually a pdf a positive definite function in vidya sagar's notation why because this is verifying this class k condition for all states hmm? not just states within some ball around the origin all right so that's the difference here so that's why i have written global positive definiteness plus the unboundedness condition okay great uh, counter examples okay counter examples are very good because they tend to jog you if you look at this function huh? this is positive definite radially unbounded i have written an explanation the function is x1 plus x2 whole squared divided by 2 yeah what happens there are only two states x1 and x2 and i'm giving you a function x1 plus x2 whole squared and divided by 2 is irrelevant but whatever is this class k class k r what is it is this class k r okay so this is you are talking about class k okay so what are those non zero points right as simple as that yeah this is not even class k why because if x2 and x1 are opposite signs x2 is minus x1 all right for all possible values of x2 equal to minus x basically this line that's what i have drawn here yeah along this line v is zero along this line in state space this is zero and this does not satisfy our easier test easier test requires for all possible non zero states yeah and these are obviously non zero states hmm? for all possible non zero states except for this guy v has to be strictly positive or w has to be strictly positive which is not okay so that's a problem not positive definitely what about this guy 
x1 square plus x1 4 yes yes so if i take points of the form this where x2 is 0 so basically along the sorry where x1 is 0 yeah basically along the y axis i take anything this function is exactly 0 yeah again 0 for non zero values so not positive definite yeah state being 0 means every element has to be 0 yeah so this is a non zero state 0 comma alpha and this is evaluating to be 0 at that okay so these are counter so simplest thing to remember if all the states do not appear in your w or v whatever notation you want to use if all the states do not appear then it is immediately not positive definite okay and it is not a function we can do lyapunov analysis with okay so all states must appear simple this is the first key requirement all right next but this this we have already done right this function this is positive definite right we've already done that because it's strictly positive yeah for non zero values of norm x right but this is not radially unbounded that should also be very evident why it maxes out at 1 Right? maximum value this can take is 1 as x goes to infinity therefore it is not unbounded okay so this is some something like a i mean i mean I'm, I, maybe the shape will be different but it's something like this guy tapers off hmm? doesn't go to infinity so this is again um, cannot be used for global stability analysis only for local results you can use this. okay all right Similarly, for the easier test for radial unboundedness or not necessarily easier anymore, if it is a function of time and state, uh, you still need the zero condition and you need a wx which is radially unbounded that you can dominate. Okay? So, this is not an easier condition like I said because uh, it is almost the same as trying to find a class kr function. Okay? So, for the time varying cases as you can see the easier conditions are not too easy but that is about all you have ok. So, but for the time invariant v or w you have very easy results to verify ok.